really proud of our team. Um, happy for our seniors. It's an important day for us. Um, and we want to be able to celebrate those guys today. It's not their last game, but uh, possibly the last game here in the stadium. And um, kind of an emotional night last night. Let all those guys get up and, and talk about what this place means to them and, and some of the things they've learned from being here and just advice they got for the younger guys. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is a, it's a small class, but man, they're just some tough dudes, some resilient guys, guys with a ton of character and uh, continue to fight, you know, through the years and, and uh, you know, they'd left a mark on our program for sure. So really uh, grateful for those guys. Um, they're an inspiration to me every day. I just can't say enough good things about that class. Wish there were more of these types of days for them over the years. Um, but certainly they've left a mark. And happy for them to get a win today. Happy for our football team. You know, it wasn't pretty the whole day, uh, but we found a way. I thought we were exceptional today on defense. Um, lights out, really. I think they maybe had less than 100 yards of offense going into that last drive or something like that. But um, really good day. Coach Volk and the D staff did a great job putting the plan together. And our kids did a phenomenal job of executing that plan. Thought we played really hard uh, today on defense. Uh, got put in some bad situations after some sudden changes. Found a way to get off the field. Created turnovers. Um, I don't know what the get six deal was, Strauss, but I imagine I think we got, we got in the first half. On the first six possessions. OK, so that, we knew it was going to be a get six game. Um, we thought there'd be limited possessions. Probably had more than, than I thought they would, but um, just phenomenal job defensively. You know, I thought offensively in the first half, we did some really good things. Uh, moved the football a little bit. Um, we turned the ball over twice, killed drives uh, when we were kind of rolling a little bit. And then in the second half, um, you know, we just we, we couldn't sustain any drives. Uh, we had a chance to finish these guys off. Uh, on the offensive side of football and, went and, and didn't get it done. And we got to learn how to finish better. Obviously, you can't you can't have um, penalties on first and 10 and put yourself in first and 15. I think we did that four times a day, which is, is unacceptable. Been an issue all year. And, and um, I'm not sure how to get that fixed. But obviously, that's something we got to get corrected. Um, you know, I thought X ran the offense. I think, you know, hats off to East Carolina. Man, we knew it was going to be a dog fight. Um, Probably the best defense you know we've seen all year. I mean, taking account how athletic they are and, and what they do, and uh, you know, playing aggressive style of football, and we knew it was going to be probably arduous today, um, and it was. And so hats off to to them. Blake Carroll did a great job getting his, his defense ready. Uh, but no, I was really proud of our guys. I think that's, we've won four out of the last six, and they haven't all been pretty. But you know we found a way to to get a W, and uh, we're just really proud of our football team today. And um, yeah, it was great. Great win, you know. But it wasn't pretty, but it was a win. It's hard to win football games. Uh, you know, we're still banged up on offense, uh, but we found a way. So we're proud of our guys. We ended up getting 12 and 13 positions. Man, it's got to be a record. On the get six stuff. Yes. 12 out of 13 yeah. positions. Yeah. Yeah, um, so, coach, um, can you just talk about five wins? That's mm -hmm. progress. First time since 2019, you've reached that level. You're within mm -hmm. one win of a bowl, being bowl mm -hmm. eligible. And, and you've got a winning record in the conference. Can you talk yeah. about making progress? Yeah, I think it's definitely progress. You'd like to have a couple more of those wins, you know, some games you'd like to get back. Uh, but it is progress, and you're sitting there with five wins. And obviously, you gotta, uh, we're going to enjoy this one, obviously, this weekend and, and come back here on Monday, go to work. And um, we're going to play a really good football team next weekend, you know, and, 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 and we're going to go down there and try to win that game, obviously. And uh, that would put us at six, which would be. Uh, you know, milestone for us getting to a bowl game, and, and uh, so excited about that opportunity. And, and they got two big ones still in front of us, so a lot to play for. And, and our kids are excited about that. And uh, I know they'll be chomping at the bit, you know, to get back to work on Monday. I know you, you know, still games left to go, and you kind of mentioned it when you were talking about the seniors. But what does it mean for them to start to have this kind of success? Those guys that kind of stuck it through yeah. through a lot of trials and tribulations and things over the last couple of years seeing the fruits of those yeah. kind of labors now. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a class that, you know, we always talk about deserving success. And you, you don't always get it on the scoreboard, but you put in the work. Uh, you play the game the right way uh, that you know in, in your mind that you've you put your best foot forward and that you deserve something, whether you get it or not. And that's peace of mind that, that I think our seniors can certainly have. You know, because they've, they've given us, the vast majority of those guys have given us everything that they've got. And uh, so it's awesome 
uh, to see them have some success, you know, because it's the wins have been tough to come by, you know, uh, during their time here. And so it's important for me and, and uh, for our football team uh, that we, we finish things off the right way for that group because they, they certainly deserve it. Coach, can you talk a little bit more about the defense? I mean, they, East Carolina couldn't do anything. I mean, they mm. all these uh, three and outs, then they, they got desperate at the end. They went for it on fourth down, didn't convert that. Um, I mean, that's pretty much a, like a pitch and a shutout. And it, as Strauss mentioned, three shutouts in one season. That yeah. speaks volumes when you're yeah. leading the nation in shutouts. Yeah. Well, I think you know, the last two weeks have been really exceptional. You know, I think, you know, at the Temple game, um, you know, those guys were a little bit ticked off, disappointed in the way that they played. You know, we were too. And, and so we challenged them to come back and, and, and practice with an edge and prepare the right way. And, and they've certainly done that. And I think, you know, in November, the teams that want it the most are the teams that are going to win. You know, unless there's a huge talent discrepancy, the teams that want it are the teams that are going to win. Um, and, and I think that's been the case the last two weeks. Our kids are itching to play. They're hungry. They're on edge. Uh, you know, they got a chip on their shoulder, and, and they've played that way. You know, particularly on the defensive side, and uh, uh, the defensive staff has done a phenomenal job of, of getting them mentally and, and physically ready to play. And, and uh, man, I don't know how much better we could have played really the last two weeks. You know, um, you know, the previous week UAB had a really good offense. You know, we pretty much shut down, and, and uh, to do that again today and to get shutouts is, is difficult. I don't care who you play, and to have three of those. Uh, this year is, is uh, you know, hats off to um, our, our, our players and uh, Coach Folk and defensive staff doing a great job. What do you think about Xavier today, and particularly even after the two fumbles? You know, it'd be real easy to let that kind of get into your head, yeah. but it seems like even though it wasn't a ton of points on the board, it seems like he still kind of ran the operation mm -hmm. without, you know, getting, letting those yeah. two plays affect yeah. him. No, I, you know, I thought he was solid. I thought he, you know, after the two turnovers, you know, he didn't flinch. And we talk about that all the time, you know, how you respond is everything. And uh, he responded the right way. He's been a great leader. Um, you know, I thought he operated the offense well. Um, you know, we had trouble blocking those guys. Uh, and that's the you know, that's the truth of the matter today. Uh, just just couldn't sustain drives in that, in that second half. Um, but I, I think he's he's done well. You know the last three weeks and, and continues to pr uh, progress and um, you know I think the thing that he's doing a little bit better is throwing the football uh, and showing in practice and it's carrying over into games and and uh, proud of of him obviously and and um, you know the, the things that he's overcome this year and just the attitude he's had the whole time and uh, I thought he was solid today you know without actually diving into the film and, and talking to the offensive guys but, uh, from my perception uh, he was he was really solid he has been. Were you concerned that in the first half that you all three of those possessions that went into East Carolina territory, you were moving the ball well, and mm -hmm. then the two fumbles and then the, the forward pitch derailed yeah. those drives. Were yeah. you worried that that was going to come back to haunt you? Because that was missed opportunities. If you can put yeah. points on the board there, it changes yeah. everything. Yeah, because you feel like you're in a pretty good flow right there. We're moving the football, we're, we're moving the change, we're getting first downs, and then we turn it over. You know the. The forward pitch, man, it just on the on the replay it looked like it was it was behind uh, X, but uh, man, they looked at it and reviewed it, so obviously it wasn't. But yeah, that, that uh, takes the wind out of your sails right there, you know. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, in the other some of the other drives we had, we get a, a false start. And that's a that's a huge penalty, you know, for us uh, to start a drive at first and fifteen, or to be in second five, get a false start, go back to second and ten. It's 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 hard to stay on track and convert. I uh, thought we were in third and long. Um, you know, third and unmanageable uh, several times a day, and, and that's that's always a bad sign. And uh, but we were able to convert some of those in the first half, so uh, some, there was some positive there. Uh, just just couldn't get much going uh, in the second half. You know, our defense uh, hung. Um, you know, defense won the game for us. You know. So obviously, in the second half well, last week, the offense had a bit of a breakout, and mm -hmm. things were, you know, it was encouraging to see. Yeah. You wanted to build on that momentum. It seemed like, especially in the second half today, a little yeah. bit of a step back. Yeah. You know, it seemed like a step forward in, in the first half. You know, it seemed like we, we, we built off what we did last week. And, you know, outside the, the turnovers, because you know, we were moving the football, so we shot ourselves in the foot a little bit. And I think, um, you know, ECU settled in, did the game plan a little bit. And like I said, we had, we had trouble blocking them and uh, didn't have a whole lot of answers. And uh, it would be interesting to go back and watch the film and, 
uh, you know, see what we can do better. And um, but, but we got to have answers, you know, for the things that they're doing. And um, but you know, again, hats off to ECU. I and mean, that's that's a good defense, really good. You know, I think outside of Notre Dame, you know, obviously they're very talented. Uh, maybe the best defense we've seen all year. Um, it seemed like the defensive line today, particularly, really controlled play. Cromwell had a sack. Justin Reed had a sack. Yeah. Uh, the strip sack. Um, it just seemed like it all started up there up front with the D line. Yeah, always does. You know they've done this, they've done it all year, man, and uh, they don't get enough credit. And the amount of times that we we dropped eight today and defended the run, you know, three man front. Um, those guys have been phenomenal all year. Um, the heart and soul of our defense and don't get enough credit. But yeah, I thought they were exceptional today. Anytime you can be in three down, stop the run, uh, it's, uh, and then drop eight in the coverage, that's that's usually a pretty good thing. Well, that was the other – well, I was going to ask about the pass defense. You get two interceptions. I mean, 24 of 38 is not a very great percentage. So, you mean, you need a lot of incomplete passes. Um, it seemed like the pass defense was on point today. Yeah, it, it, it certainly was. I think, uh, you know, passing yards, complete 24 passes for 154, 55 yards. So, you know, one thing that we always talk about is not giving people gifts, you know, keeping everything in front of us and, and tackling when we do. Uh, making people throw the check downs, and I thought we did a really good job uh, of that today. Thought we played well on the back end. Any other questions for Coach? I think Landon Robinson also had a sack. So we yeah, got three sacks, all, all, all three, three sacks linemen. Yeah, that's right. It's awesome. It's the way it should be. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> right. Well, I mean, as a senior captain, can you talk about winning on senior day? It's a very emotional coach mentioned. You all all got up and talked at the team hotel last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, this had to mean a lot. Yeah, you know, extremely emotional. Um, but, you know, you can't let – got to play with emotions, but you can't let emotions play with you. Uh, so, as a defense, you know, we went out there and uh, just did what we were supposed to do and uh, played hard. Kind of building off of that, you know, there's still games left, but this senior class has kind of gone through so much these last couple of years. Does it – what is – kind of feel like when you kind of take all of that into context, um, I know today's just one game mm -hmm. and there's more still to go, but um, to be at this point, considering yeah. everything you guys have gone through. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, I mean, it feels good. Um, pretty sure five wins is the most wins we've had, uh, the senior class. So, I mean, it feels good. There's a lot, a lot of work to be done, though. Uh, two of the biggest games left of the season uh, next week and then, what, three weeks from now? So, uh, a, lot, a lot of work to be done still. Justin, can you talk about the job the defensive line did? We just detailed that all three sacks were by down linemen. You guys really helped control play up front. Yes, sir. So uh, Coach issued a challenge to us this week. Um, you know, he said, you're only as good as your last game. And so we had to make an emphasis this week to make sure that, you know, that we can even improve our game and take, take it up a new level. And I feel like this week we came out with a different sense of aggression um, to attack the run game and to be physical against the pass rush. Media, you just heard Coach talking about the pass defense, but uh, a lot of times he, he had nowhere to go. And as he Coach mentioned, he had to check down and throw short and you know, 155 yards on 24 completions. I don't know what that average is, but it isn't very high. <laughs> it's less than 10, I think, yes, if my was. math's right. Can you talk about that? A little over six. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just credit to Coach Volk for like the game plan um, and just putting us in the right position as a defense. Uh, when things come together and everybody's doing their job, that, that's what happens. And uh, you get shutouts. So it happened today. Uh, for any of you guys, you know, what is the feel like out there when you guys are downing really for 60 minutes and you guys are getting three and outs and, and I think the average what, 1.5 um, yards per carry? When, when, when you guys are clicking like that and getting them off the field time and time again, just as a unit, what's that feel like down there for you guys? It's fun. I mean, you know, ever since you're a little kid, you play, you play to win and you play to go out there and, you know, whoop someone's butt, uh, whoop the person's butt across from you. And, uh, you know, going out there and doing that, is, uh, it's fun. Like, I, th I think the past two games, we've really emphasized, you know, the fixation of detail and the, you know, how, how we play. And then um, I've really, like, tried to echo, like, just have fun, enjoy it, you know, um, so. So, Will, you're within one <clears throat> game of being one win of being bowl eligible. How much would that mean to be able to, after all of what's happened the last three years, to be able to have a winning record, to be bowl eligible and obviously beat Army? 
yeah, you know, that'd, that'd be a huge deal. Um, it'd be an amazing experience, uh, a great opportunity for us, uh, you know, to have another game and to continue to show the world who we are as Navy midshipmen. Defense got 12 today out of the get six. That's the record. <laughs> previous record was nine four times. Jeez. That's what I was 12 on 13 possessions. Give us an assessment of, from your standpoint of the offense overall for today. Yeah, it was a weird game. I, I was saying on the sideline, it's probably one of the weirdest games I've been a part of because we had so much success offensively. It's a lot of great production, but then it would be, you know, one play, whether it's a, a fumble or, you know, a false start or just a negative play that would set us back and kill the drive. So, I mean, I know how stuff works. Everything's going to be all offense. The offense played really poorly. They didn't do this, didn't do that. But at the end of the day, you go back and watch the game. You, you minimize just a couple plays in this game, and we probably put up 28 points in the first half. Um, now we'll take a win. Uh, are we satisfied? Never. We got to go clean that stuff up so we can keep moving forward and get better. But we'll take it. But it wasn't pretty, but, you know, we got to be able to get wins when they're hard, and we did that. So I asked Will the same thing about the senior class, you know, getting to this point, considering everything that you guys have gone through over the last couple of years. What does that just feel amongst you guys as the group, as the ones that stayed and, and gutted it out and now to be having this success late in this year? Um, just kind of what's it mean to you, not just tonight's win, but just kind of overall understanding yeah. that there are two more games. Like of that. course. Yeah, this one was huge for the seniors. I mean, you know, our senior class came in here with COVID. We couldn't leave for a whole year. You know, just couldn't live our lives the way we wanted to, honestly. It made things a lot tougher, you know, waking up three times a week to get COVID tested on top of already our hard schedule that we have. Um, so I'm just really proud um, that, you know, the senior class got a win today. And I'm super fortunate that I was able to be a part of that. Um, and, and I'm super blessed to have these guys by my side um, and, and play around these guys. And these are, you know, some of the, the best men I've ever met in my life. Um, so it's just super grateful for the opportunity to do that. It means a lot. Jaden, you all had talked about finishing strong. You've now got two wins. You have an opportunity to finish the season with four straight wins. That would be a winning record, beating Army, bowl game. Can you talk about what's out there ahead of you, some good goals to, to achieve? Yeah, um, we uh, just talked about it right after the win, but we still can get the 3 0 tie for the Commander Chiefs bowl game. And then, you know, one of the biggest is obviously beating Army. So everything is right in front of us right now. Um, and, you know, just got to go forward. Uh, SMU next week, and it's really like one one to know every week. Alex, what the second half the offense kind of sputtered, and there were several times when you were in their deep in their territory and couldn't move the ball. What what happened in the second half? From you know, I know you haven't had been able to watch the film, but from just what you can recollect from the game, what 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 happened in the second half to cause the offense to get derailed a little bit? Oh, maybe like you said, I don't know exactly what happened. Um, you know, whether missed assignments or, you know, they're, they're giving us a good look and, and something we can't really play against. But um, you know what's going to happen. It's the game of football. Um, it's the game of life. And, you know, you're going to have setbacks. And, you know, like, like, like Lex said, we had, we had success. Uh, it was a weird game. We had success uh, in the first half. And, you know, come second half, it, it wasn't really moving like we, like we wanted it to. But, you know, that's just going to happen. Um, you know, that's just something we got to fix in the, in the film room and, and on the practice field this week and, uh, you know, fix it up for SMU. Alex, take us through the touchdown run. It seemed like you popped over that right side. I don't think anybody touched you from, from our view, at least. Um, just kind of take me through that play. Yeah, well, it all starts with X. Um, it was a it was a replay, I think it was, um, and you know he made the right read. Uh, I think his rekey uh, came down the line, and you know it, it gave me an opportunity to, to to get in the open field. And and then I give all the credit to my guys outside. Uh, our A backs and receivers blocked their butt off. Um, you know, including Jay, that they, they really do a good job at you know getting leverage on players. Um, you know. Pushing back, you know, giving me space to, to move and run, and you know, really all I had to do was run, run into the end zone, and, and you know, they do a good job. They've done a good job all year, so I give all the credit to them. Was that a counter trade play that you scored yeah. a touchdown? Yeah. Take me back to the play right before that when you scrambled. You ran through a, a you could have driven a truck through that hole. Um, that was kind of a um, misdirection play. But it seemed like everybody went left and you went right, and there wasn't much over there as far as defenders. Yeah, it was pretty much just some basic triple option just out of the gun. Um, they kind of walked two guys on the field to a look where if I had more time, I probably would have checked it um, just because it was just going back to base option rules. Um, but I kept it on. They slanted across the face. So I was able to get around it, um, hit that hole, and, and get moving and set up you know, good field position for Alex to punch it in. You have the two fumbles, and it would be real easy to kind of get down on yourself and, and kind of go in the funk, but you didn't. I'm 
curious, after that moment, you take moments to kind of talk to yourself, or is it real easy to kind of just keep it moving on and just thinking next play up? Yeah, I was pissed for like a minute. You know, that's rightfully so. I'm human. You know, I'm really mad at stuff like that, especially when you're moving the ball. You know, one of them was a mesh from between the both of us, but, you know, you can't be indecisive. You got to make decisions. You got to make them fast. And when you don't, especially in this offense, fumbles are going to happen. And that's I've been told that all, all four years. Coach Jasper always says, don't be indecisive. Even if you miss it, just, just pick one and go with it. And that happened. And then in terms of the one where I was, you know, was getting sacked, I tried to get out and make a play. And I probably should have just tucked it, but the guy made a was going to tackle, but didn't even go for the ball. Just got a lucky hand, and that lucky hand could cause it. So it's tough, um, but that's life. And I said a speech to the seniors last night of the whole team. Football is the ultimate game of life. You know, you're going to have setbacks like that. In this case, it was a fumble. But there's so much game left to play. You know, if I go down and I show up, put my head down and quit, you know, everyone else around me is going to do the same. So I understand the power that I have being, you know, a, a leader, a senior, but, uh, you know, the quarterback of this offense. Um, and, and, I, and I moved on to the next play. And, um, was it pretty? No, but I was able to shake that stuff off. But being human, it does affect you. I mean, no one wants to. No one's like, oh, well, you know, I fumbled. Yeah, no, no, one, no one's happy about that, but I was able to move on from it. So what about the, the forward pitch? It looked like an optical illusion almost. I watched it three times, and I swear to God, you threw it backwards. But it's almost like Daba's momentum turned it into a forward pitch. I don't know. I, I'd have to watch it again. But uh, were you surprised by that? That just seemed weird. I was, honestly, because even after I did it, even after I pitched it, and then they said they were going to review, uh, the ref came up to me and was like, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I think you're fine. I think that, and then they, they reviewed it. So I guess I pitched it, and his momentum of him running while he caught it was in front. You know, it could go either way. I mean, I'm sure there's been a thousand other pitches over the last couple of years that have been the same exact thing and not being called, so, so it just didn't get a break.